Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So good. All right. So so by way of introduction, um, I'm a researcher and lecturer in the physics department at the University of Adelaide. I'm also the president of an advocacy organization called Freestyle Cyclists. And I have previously stood in 2016 as a Senate candidate for the Australian Cyclists Party um, on a sort of joint ticket with the Science Party. So I want to talk about transport cycling, uh, which is a immediately implementable low tech solution to a lot of environmental and social problems. Unfortunately, cycling in Australia has been in decline since 2011. Um, if you look at the number of people who have cycled in the last week, month or year, it's been going pretty much steadily downhill except during lockdowns, uh, which is a great shame because the potential for cycling is huge. About 26% of commuter journeys in Australia are just the right sort of distance to ride a bike. Um, and we really would like to see more people riding bikes as a replacement for car travel because cars are pretty much awful. They have a whole slew of problems associated with them, um, including sedentary lifestyles, space taken up for roads and parking and, and whatnot. And those problems are associated with electric cars as well as petrol cars. On the other hand, bicycles make massive, riding a bicycle regularly has massive improvements to your health, uh, your immune system function, reductions in all cause mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality, redu reductions in depression, People who do their shopping by bicycle spend more than people who do their shopping by car. There was a federal government study from 2013, which basically found that everyone who cycles to work saves the economy about $5,000 per year. Um, and switching from a petrol car to a, to a bicycle cuts your CO2 emissions by 10 times more than switching to an EV because of the amount of energy that's required to manufacture a, a, an electric car. So what does this have to do with helmet laws? Well, lots of things can discourage people from cycling. In Australia, we have, we're almost unique in having laws that require everyone to wear a helmet under all circumstances when they cycle. If you look at the diagrams here, I've plotted out the states and territories in order of increasing enforcement of helmet laws. Um, and we see that as enforcement goes up, cycling participation goes down, uh, especially in female cyclists. Also, if we rank the states and territories in order of, of enforcement, we see that rather than cycling fatalities decreasing, cycling fatalities actually kind of level off or even go up. So somehow helmet laws don't seem to be doing what they say on the tin in terms of making cycling safer. If we compare cycling injuries and other transport injuries over time, we see that all transport modes got safer at around about the same time that helmet laws were brought in. So we can't ascribe those improvements just to helmet laws. So what's going on here? Well, we have studies of hospitalized cyclists which suggest that helmet use reduces head injury rates by 30 to 70 percent but anyone who's familiar with the concept of conditional probability will recognize that here we have a case of selection bias when you look at people who are brought in after having an accident you're just looking at the rate of accidents per uh, sorry, injuries per accident you're not looking at the rate of injuries per overall journey if you have circumstances when accidents are very rare then helmet use achieves very little and we can do calculations based on uh, measures of cycling participation and find that in reality, the probability of, suffering, probability of suffering a serious head injury per journey is about one in three million. And the probability of a fatality per journey is about one in 15 million. Um, and so therefore the, the reduction in injury rate per journey from, from helmet use is very, very small. Also, we need to recognize that there's a bias towards the cyclists who are engaging in sports cycling being brought in for accidents. So we can't necessarily apply those uh, results and extrapolate them across to transport cycling where you have more risk averse cyclists who tend not to have accidents. So all, all helmet laws seem to have done is reduce the number of people who are riding who weren't really having very many accidents in the first place. There's also a social harm aspect to this. Um, psychological studies have shown that motorists tend to view cyclists in helmets and also high vis clothing as less than fully human and are more likely to engage in aggressive behavior towards them. In Seattle, it was found that people of color and homeless people were vastly more likely to be targeted by the police for ticketing for helmet infringements. Uh, we have research from New South Wales, which suggests that the same thing is going on in New South Wales, including young people with uh, mental illnesses and disabilities who are accumulating tens of thousands of dollars of fine debt that they can't pay, which brings them into the legal system for a minor offence. In South Australia, something similar seems to be going on where court enforcement of helmet infringements is about 10 times higher than court enforcement of speeding fines and is focused on rural areas with significant Indigenous populations. So in short, 
Um, cycling is an inherently safe activity that's really good for society and it's vastly safer than a lot of other activities people do that are considered perfectly acceptable. Um, it's something that we can do straight away. We, we need to make a transition to electric vehicles in the transport sector, but that'll take years or decades and we can do a transition to bikes right now and solve a whole bunch of social problems at the same time and empower people who cannot drive for various reasons, either economic or disability related or so on. Um, by having laws which punish people for doing something which has a, is a victimless crime, we're missing out on all those economic, social and environmental benefits. Uh, we turn a, a beneficial activity into a, into a crime. We create a crime which is easily used by police to target already disadvantaged groups. And we slow down the transition to a fossil fuel free uh, form of transport by creating the impression that an activity which is really incredibly safe is more dangerous than it truly is. And here are my references. Thank you.